Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of my city journal for Valle de Agua. This is uh, Water Valley, this is a desert city and my first inland city so I thought it might be good to do a YouTube series on this. So let's start with where the city originated shall we and um, coming off the main highway there's a traffic circle and this was originally the main road into the first settlement area of Fern Springs which we have coming up on the right hand side. Um, Fern Springs is a small residential community based around a really nice little mountain lagoon here um, with National Park to the north. Um, main means of transport in and out of the city has been an interstate bus terminal and you've got the main street there on the right hand side with some shops, a gas station, uh, things like that. And there's plenty of potential in this area for higher density building um, to the north and the east and also more commercial activity. Now heading north from Fern Springs, the Belrose Parkway takes us north to the, the suburb of Isabel Hills. Now Isabel Hills is linked by obviously this parkway here, as well as a uh, metro line to the, uh, to the eastern side. You probably say that a lot of my roads are quite small in the city, but what I wanted to do with a small population, currently around 20 to 22,000, is um, not go too crazy with the highways and the interchanges as cool as they are. Try and keep the roads local uh, and, and sort of dense and more realistic for a population this size. Uh, another thing is that with larger capacity roads, they're less pedestrian friendly in real life. So I want to try and minimize the, the land area that uh, roads take up in this city and have a priority on public transport and um, pedestrian friendly areas. So Isabel Hills, I'm not so happy with that at the moment. Um, as you can see, it's a mix of high density and low density res residential. So I'm not quite sure where it should go in the future. There's plenty of room for expansion. There's some really nice uh, reservoir front property uh, you can see over there. Um, that reservoir is the main water source for the city. And we'll also pass the water treatment plant on the western side of the reservoir shortly. So yeah, Isabel Hills, um, it has uh, a mix of housing, as I mentioned, quite a few townhouses and apartments for an older demographic. Uh, Jones Bay is one development right on the waterfront, which is quite nice. Um, and yeah, plenty of room here to expand along Reservoir Drive if uh, more, more residential zoning is needed. But I would really welcome your thoughts and ideas on how to develop this. So yeah, water treatment plant here. This area is going to stay desert. It's quite arid and dry, so not uh, too much building will go on there. But south of Reservoir Drive, we have this uh, suburb of Albany. And Albany um, has a retired demographic, again, beautiful properties on the lakefront, so some wealthier people, but also some townhouses and things, uh, and it's bordered by the city centre area to the south. So yeah, moving from Albany, um, we're going to fly over the uh, city centre area, and you can see Fern Springs to the left. That's the city there. And we're going to come to the city's main industrial area and uh, transit hub. So there's an above ground metro station here, as well as a bus terminal to link um, all uh, aspects of the city. So you notice I haven't really gone crazy with uh, with roads in this zoned area. But you've got a few uh, bits and pieces of industry. You've also got uh, a bakery here. And we're coming up now on the, uh, the farming district. So the Belmont Plantation is bordered by the uh, highway to the north. Uh, and more residential and the airport to the south as we'll see in a minute. So we've got crops, we've got uh, animal and meat production and we've got uh, timber and a sawmill and a paper plant uh, to the northern side there on the right of the screen you can see. All of this area provides uh, good access to commercial zones as well as to the highway. Flying across the farms now um, we're going to head down to the airport and check out what uh, what this regional airport is going to look like. Um, now, the airport in uh, Valle de Agua still hosts international flights, but it's a small city, so you know, it's a small airport. Um, basically, you've got one one-way loop in front of the airport. 
all the airport services based around that loop uh, and a single runway. I do hope to expand the airport in the future and uh, custom make uh, some runways, taxiways and auxiliary buildings around the airport. So yeah, you can see this, uh, this has just a highway entrance here, there's no fancy flyover, but this is what uh, a lot of small regional airports have, they simply have an intersection on the highway. As this gets busier though, I'll obviously need to, to make some changes to it. And you've got some kamikaze drivers there just trying to get across. Whoa, that was a bit close. There's a toy factory just situated at the airport with all the uh, inputs that the factory needs. And there also seems to be a bit of an incident going on down here with, uh, with a car accident outside the, uh, the airport complex. So yeah, in the airport loop, you've got all the services. There is a police station, there's uh, car rental and electric vehicle charging points, cafes, parks, there's a food uh, truck uh, park, uh, and a small commercial district as well, housing things like uh, taxi company and airport services, catering, that sort of thing. Um, to the west of the airport, there is actually a little plane spotting observation deck, so you can see some people parked up here just checking out the, uh, the planes landing on the runway. Food truck park right there. And most people walk through the park to get to the metro station, which is the uh, main link to the downtown area. So this metro will take them to the university or to the downtown zone, which we'll see shortly. So heading west from the airport, you've got uh, the, the, probably the most expensive community, uh, residential community in Valle de Agua, and this is the uh, suburb of Arabella. This is University Avenue which runs down to the campus area and we're about to head into the uh, suburb of Arabella. So low density commercial with some high density commercial on the right hand side near the parkway and then you've got some um, just local shops on this main street opposite the, uh, the elementary school. Now, this is probably one of the more detailed suburbs that I've created um, in the city skylines, but you can see it needs a fair bit of work still. Um, so despite being quite a dry, arid uh, map theme, there's a lot of people here with money who can spend the cash on, on lawns and gardens and gardeners. So as you'll see, there's some really nice properties in this suburb. Local shops here. Um, this is just the back of the shops with parking for staff. And there is some medium density residential too. So this is um, Arabella Muse. This is a sort of middle-class, um, mid-density development based around some gardens. And as we head back east, uh, you'll see some of the most exclusive uh, houses in, in the city. And although they border the airport, there's plenty of buffer between uh, the airport and these properties with trees. Oh, some tailgating planes there. And they have quite a bit of uh, space. You can see a few acres per property. So really expansive mansions, these ones. And both of these owners seem to be uh, car collectors by the looks of things. Heading west now, away from the airport and Arabella, you can see the mountain range in the, in the background. This is the southern end of the, uh, the city centre area, and also the main university campus. So currently about 800 students in this university, uh, but plenty of room for expansion as you can see as the city grows. 
this university was originally situated in the uh, city centre area, but uh, it outgrew that. And it has its own campus area now and uh, transport links. So to the left we have university housing, um, and to the right we have a transit hub, taxi depot, university gymnasium and uh, library. Now this is a uh, metro and bus hub with the uh, main link to the airport here, so really convenient for students coming and going from campus. As the lights come on, you can see um, some medium density student housing here, nicely landscaped, um, and plenty of room for more campus style accommodation. The idea is that there's quite a big community uh, living in close proximity to campus, so it gives this area a bit more life and, and vibrancy. Morningside Park is a sleepy suburb just on the edge of the on the outskirts of the city. Um, you can see it's uh, basically on the edge of the desert and predominantly low density with a few uh, medium density developments like this one sprinkled in. You can see uh, the close proximity to the city. And I've tried to keep the density quite realistic in terms of how it steps down from the, the super tall towers down to the, the houses. Flying over the city south now, you can see a high school with a baseball field. You've got a couple of big interchanges here um, and a lot of traffic circles and I find the traffic circles are, are pretty good at prioritizing traffic correctly as long as you don't get people stuck on the roundabout. Heading north now, we're going to come up to the financial district on the left hand side of the screen and the main park is uh, Applegate Park. This is the biggest man-made park in, uh, in the city. It actually handles um, a lot of pedestrians and has a main metro line running through it. Now this was the first downtown area that I created, just known simply as city centre. Um, there's a lot of residential in development in here, as well as office development. And you can see it's bordered by these uh, four lane roads, two lanes e each way, as well as plenty of bike lanes to allow people to cycle uh, quickly between areas. There's also a metro station in the city centre area. On the outskirts of the city centre, there's a few medium density uh, residential developments, again with good connection to bike paths and things like that. Now this is arguably the busiest intersection of the game which borders the industrial area and the commercial district but it actually flows quite well. And that brings us to the end of our tour. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to uh, continue to get updates about this project. And I'm really interested in your thoughts as well on how the city should progress and what you like and what you don't like about it. Now in future episodes, we're gonna be doing some builds of uh, new areas in the city and new infrastructure. So make sure you follow along and tune in for those. Thanks very much for watching everyone and see you next time.